everybody. Welcome to this week's Weekend Filler. Weekend Filler, as you know, is a show about people just like you all over the Delaware Valley. Eating cool things, drinking cool things, feats of strength, inspirational tales. But this week, it's ghost tales on our Halloween spooktacular. And as always, our recipe is very simple. We give you our mic and you give us your Halloween treats. First up, we're gonna kick off the Halloween spooktacular with our good friends in New Hope, the Creeper Gallery. It's one of our favorite places to visit this time of year. Filler. This is Donna from the Creeper Gallery. And what kind of Halloween would it be unless we paid a visit to all the haunted items in the Red Room at the Creeper Gallery? Most items here are antique. I like the antique ghosts. They can't run as fast as I can. Um, we range from dolls that have nice little spirits attached to cursed boxes which have bad spirits attached. So we have some Casper and we have some Exorcist and it's a perfect combination. Now I'm gonna take you out front where we've lined up a few choice items and I'll tell you how they're haunted and how nice or bad the little ghosts are that are attached to them. This is Sam. Supposedly it's a portrait doll of a voodoo practitioner from uh, the 1800s. He's from New Orleans. He has a bad habit of falling over and hurting himself. As you can see, he's missing his left hand. Uh, we did do investigations on him uh, through New Jersey Paranormal. We had our mediums uh, check him out. And he's a very active spirit, but a very kind spirit. If he's this way on a Saturday, he's this way on Sunday, or he's leaning back, maybe as long as the doll's here and his hair's on it, maybe that's why he can't leave yet, but I'm not giving him a haircut. This is our next item. There was a young girl in 1939 in Chicago named Jackie Neville, and they were skating um, on the street in front of their house. It was three girls. She was nine years old, and what we found out once we did the investigation, two escaped convicts jumped out of a car and were shooting at two insurance salesmen who were walking house to house to sell uh, insurance, and they were shooting at them, and one of the bullets went through the temple of Jacqueline while she was wearing these and skating. Her mom ran out of the house, grabbed her. She was bleeding profusely. They jumped in a car. She still had her skates on and she died on the way to the hospital. We had a good 45 minutes of very active, talkative investigations. She gave her name. She gave her best friend's name. She is mischievous for sure like all of them are. She's like bordering on poltergeist. <laughs> Inside this box is a bottle of earth, two bottles of cremains, and then we also have a hundred little tiny dreadlocks from a child that belonged to a woman named Cynthia Hall. One thing I learned was in the practice of voodoo, if you want to keep the spirit earthbound, you would cover everything in earth and that supposedly would stop the spirit from leaving the earth and crossing over. Um, the mediums feel that a young child was killed and they felt that the mom uh, practiced voodoo to try and keep the child's spirit with her. She just could not bear to let that child go. There's nothing evil about it even though voodoo was used to try and regenerate this child's life. And uh, that's the story of this poor little girl. Uh, hopefully we can find a name on her and more about her and she can rest. Thanks for spending another few minutes at the Creeper Gallery this Halloween. And I hope you've learned something. And happy Halloween and a safe Halloween to everybody. Like a big ghost aquarium. Like a big ghost aquarium. You got it. <laughs> In New Hope. <laughs> Next up is New Jersey Paranormal. We have been fans of these guys since the show started, and it is such a pleasure to finally have them on the filler. What I love most about NJP is their group dynamic. Each one is a little different, but together they're this cohesive ghost hunting unit that is perfect. Hey, Weekend Filler. I'm John Ruggiero, and we are New Jersey Paranormal. We investigate uh, paranormal activity 
in people's homes, uh, in private businesses, in commercial businesses, in historical buildings, uh, pretty much wherever there's an issue and people think they're experiencing something, we'll come out and try to assist you. We have a different approach to our beliefs in the paranormal, different religious backgrounds, uh, yet together we work very cohesively. Uh, I consider myself more of a skeptic. The reason I got into the paranormal field is because of a fear of death from when I was young. I am a uh, psych nurse and um, I'm able to kind of debunk uh, by looking in the medicine cabinet. And I've already come with the idea that there is an afterlife and I'm more here to prove to people that it exists. The construction of, uh, of some of these places uh, going into uh, how the building is set up and how it was made. Sometimes uh, I'm able to look at like the, the structures and, and sometimes debunk uh, a lot of the claims that are going on. And I'm more of the naturalist. I bring compassion and empathy because I actually grew up experiencing some very horrific hauntings. So I try to keep it real and get a lot of the people that come to and, and deal with us that you do have to understand that some of this stuff is very terrifying and it's not all about the uh, caspers of the world that there are some dangerous things that are out there you're dealing with the paranormal in theory you're dealing with spirits who are people the people that live in the home the people who used to live in the home who's ever in the building you have to have as much information as you can before just going into a home and using your equipment because you may do more harm than good uh, the reason somebody would contact us is because they're experiencing things in their home like um, doors opening and shutting. Uh, they hear footsteps in the middle of the night when nobody's awake or nobody's around. Um, they say they see things, they see shadows out of the corners of their eyes sometimes. The feeling that it's a bad entity, they just have that feeling and um, they feel that it's evil or demonic. They just get that really bad vibe in the middle of the night when they're going up to use the bathroom and they just feel that something is ready to attack them. All the way to a call where people are claiming to be possessed. Right. So if we do get to the point where we're investigating a home, we bring in a lot of equipment that you may have seen on different shows. A lot of this equipment is based on the theory that spirits were once people. Haunting known dark. Believe it or not, those equipments that light up and blink and make noises, they all measure things like static electricity, electric magnetic fields, you hear that term a lot. Now we're encouraging a spirit to come near us or communicate and the equipment starts going off, you may have something there. Of course, you back that up with, you know, IR footage, black and white footage of shadow figures, balls of light and voices on recorders. That's another big, piece of uh, equipment that we use because if you can again get an intelligent response of you're asking a question and something is validating that by responding to that question now you know that you've probably got something there you can talk to me if you like just say my name again my name is john hey. uh, don't talk about what? Hey. Hey, Good. I said my name. i'm the naturalist that's why you'll see them more talk about the equipment and stuff. I'm the scrying, I'm the old school. There's there's uh, the pendulums, there is the, there's water scrying, there's sand scrying, there's cloud scrying. But the bottom line is when it comes to ghost hunting or communicating with the spirit, <clears throat> it's the personal experience that has the more profound effect. If you're touched, hear a voice live, that beats out any other experience that you could possibly have. Uh and if you're experiencing anything paranormal, you have any concerns, please reach out to us, look for us online. At YouTube, you can find us on New Jersey Paranormal, on our Facebook page, New Jersey Paranormal, and on Instagram. Come check us out, get to know us. You will have experienced what we describe as the sightless stare of Aaron Burr. Welcome back to Lorinos. Next up, we've got a little bit more from New Jersey Paranormal. We gave you an introduction. Now we're gonna have some of their most memorable moments. And this is just a taste of what they have to offer. So please check them out online. You will not believe some of their hauntings. You know, for us being involved in the paranormal, history and the paranormal go hand in hand because these are the spirits 
of people that have come before. And there's been a lot of cases where we've come in and not only validated what yeah. they've experienced, but been able to add to the story and find out things. Burlington County Prison, I was investigating outside. We had, I had the SLS camera out there, which uh, depicts movement on the screen as like a stick figure, like a connects would. And I got this figure of a, a person there. There was nobody there. I think it's reaching out to John. It's Wesley Warren. Whoa, whoa, look at that, look at that. It's still what? there. And this person, I we kind of thought it was funny at first. It, it, it looked like the first punching game. You see the guy, the stick figure punching. We got a uh, sergeant uh, on the obelisk. So we didn't think, didn't think much of it because uh, of the way the stick figure looked. Later on, I was talking to one of the historians that, that came that night. He overheard us talking and he comes to me. He goes, what did you see? And I says, I told him, I said, I, I had a, a person where there was nobody there punching back and forth. And uh, he had me show him and, and right where I got it, uh, one of the CEOs years ago uh, was attacked by the inmates there and went down fighting. It was actually beaten to death on the spot. At the Wyckoff Garrison House in Somerset, New Jersey, we were doing an EVP session the one night and we played it back and it was clear as day. Class A EVP, it said murder. It says murder. It does say murder. So I went and I did um, research and Martha came up. Martha uh, Wyckoff. She was one of the first women executed by electric chair in the United States of America in Sing Sing prison because she murdered her stepdaughter in a jealous rage. <laughs> and even the historians didn't know that and she she's was, buried right down the road. She was buried yeah. right down the road. Yeah. The one that, that comes to mind for me is the Caldwell Parsonage in Union, New Jersey. I was using a piece of equipment called the Ivalis that um, it takes energy readings and it has words. Uh, it's a 2000 word dictionary. Supposedly a reading corresponds with a word. Again, very random sometimes, but I'm in this building where Hannah Caldwell was killed by British soldiers back in the 1700s. And her husband's name was, was named James Caldwell. The box being within 10 minutes of being there, it said James twice. It said Reverend once, and it said upstairs, it said British brought fire. Brought fire. Oh my God, they burned the house down. Oh my God. Sterling Hill Mining Museum. Um, and that one, I was actually inside an actual mine in the dark. And my daughter turns to me and she goes, did you hear that? And I was like, just ignore it. We're here to do something and I don't want to get freaked out. So let's just do what we're doing. So as I'm finishing up, you get this wave of emotion and feeling this. I don't know how to describe like where your hair just stands on end. And it's like this warm breeze that hits you like something's coming at you, running at you. And we turn and we start to book it. And as we're booking it, you hear this growl. Within that mine, about 90 people died over 100 years of different accidents. If you want to see any of our evidence, you can go on our Facebook page at New Jersey Paranormal, or you can follow us on YouTube at New Jersey Paranormal. They say New Hope PA has more ghosts per capita than any other village in the entire country. So we caught up with New Hope Ghost Tours for one of their more famous ghosts. Again, this is just a taste of New Hope Ghost Tours. Check them out every weekend until Thanksgiving. Hi, my name is Scott and I'm a tour guide for Adi Kent Thomas Jeffries Ghost Tours of New Hope, where we've been celebrating 39 years of bringing you the mystery and the history of New Hope. I'm now gonna tell you one of my favorite stories that we do on the ghost tours of New Hope. Well, thanks to the musical Hamilton, everyone seems to know about Alexander Hamilton. But what a lot of people do not know is that Alexander Hamilton was part of an artillery unit. And at the Battle of Yorktown, Hamilton was given charge of troops. His mission was to take out readout number 10 so that the French guns can get in closer to drive the British out of Yorktown. Hamilton took out readout number 10 with such efficiency, he did not lose a single man. And because he took out readout number 10, he was honored with the $10 bill. When we became the United States of America, Alexander Hamilton was our first secretary of the U.S. Treasury. 
He oversaw the building of our very first bank, which still stands in Philadelphia today. But he had a rival, a political rival. And that rival was the Vice President of the United States under Thomas Jefferson. And that is Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton did not like each other. It is safe to say that they hated each other. They hated each other so much that after a political dinner in New York, Aaron Burr challenged Alexander Hamilton to a duel. And then on July 11th, 1804, in Weehawken, New Jersey, Aaron Burr shot Alexander Hamilton. On July 12th, a messenger came to Aaron Burr's home where he was staying to give him the news that Hamilton had succumbed to his wounds. Aaron Burr then fled, and he fled to New Hope. Now, why would he pick New Hope? He picked New Hope because during the American Revolution, the Continental Army was through here on many occasions, and at the time, it was known as Coriolis Ferry. And Aaron Burr was part of that army, so he knew the buildings, he knew where to go, he knew where to hide, and that's exactly what he did. He hid from the law because he knew he killed an American hero. It is said, when you are in New Hope and you got a feeling that something or someone is staring at you, yet nobody is there, or you are certain that something or someone is lurking in the shadows, yet nobody is there. Some people have even said they have seen a shadow that doesn't seem to be attached to anybody. You will have experienced what we describe as the sightless stare of Aaron Burr. Now the one apparition that we have in New Hope, more than any other apparition, is that of Aaron Burr. And I wish you all a happy Halloween. I am the diabolical Dr. Shot. Party! Dr. Shot is throwing a party! Welcome back, Miller fans. Our next spot is a shout out to our resident horror host of the 70s, Dr. Shock. Not every station in the town had one. We had the best one in the country. Weekend Filler is actually filmed in the same studio as Dr. Shock, right over there. And we like to think we capture some of the same magic that he did. Hi, all you mortals out there. I am the diabolical Dr. Shock. Party. Dr. Shot is throwing a party! <laughs> eat your heart out, baby. Eat your heart out, yeah, eat your heart Dr. Shock's real name was Joe Zvizlak. Zvizlak. Uh, he was interested in magic when he was in the Navy. And take notes, because Shocky Doc is going to teach you how to make another monster. First thing we're going to do is to uh, put the white clown makeup on half of the face. Getting back to my uh, handmade monster here, what I've done. And one day he was in a, uh, a barber shop in Manioc, I guess it was. And we had a, a director here named Freddie Bauer. And Freddie happened to be in the barber chair. And next to him was Joe Zawizlak getting the haircut. And uh, Len Simon said to Freddie Bauer, how are things in showbiz? How are things at Channel 17? And Freddie said, well, everything's pretty good but I would really love to get a horror host, you know, like Roland was years ago. And at that, Lenny said, here's my buddy, Joe. Joe, show him what you can do. And uh, Joe went into the ashtray and he took some black ashes and put them under his, his eyes and parted his hair in the middle and sprayed it and, you know, put up his, put the, the cape around him and said, hello, my freaky father. And Freddie says, oh my God, that's that's perfect. That's what I'm, that's what exactly what I'm looking for. Come with me. And the story was they didn't even finish the haircuts. They got in the car and came up to Channel 17 and did a, uh, a demo, and, uh, and he, was, he was off and running. He was hired. Greetings, my uh, movie models of madness, and welcome to Horror Theater. So Dr. Shock ended up doing screaming on Saturday nights. They had a, a, a lighting board with different colors and, and a coffin and the, the counter, and he was spooky and, and he was supposed to be all this horror-type host. After a few years of that, the station manager decided to put Dr. Shock on a Saturday afternoon and split it into two different shows, Mad Theater and Horror Theater. Old Ben Propeller of the Jet Set Dr. Shock saying, uh, let there be flight. So speaketh the count. <laughs> you 
101-year-old in the restaurant the other day. And she looked like probably better than me in the morning. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. You're going to be glad you did is we've got some Halloween bloopers. All these places we went to are pretty creepy. That doesn't mean we didn't have a little fun. What up, dogs? Weekend filler. We're New Jersey Paranormal. Yeah. Uh, we're trying. You guys, are you guys real? <laughs> <laughs> what was the song you were singing I'm in the car staying. when we were driving here that last time? Anything. If you like pedia coladas. <laughs> Stop her, please. And getting caught in the rain. <laughs> Catch anything? No. no. Bermuda, Bahama. Come on, pretty mama. Yeah, I know. Well, now we had a 101 year old in the restaurant the other day. And she looked like probably better than me in the morning. <laughs> now, one of the reasons I love doing the ghost tours of New Hope is that, I'm oh, sorry, is you get really loud cars. Wait till you're here on a Saturday night when the motorcycle club is here and try to do a story. E Largo. Montego. <laughs> or when the train goes by, that's also fun too. Um, you can't compete with a train. I don't care how much you think you can project. If you like making love at me at night, oh, hey. Sorry about all the COVID. Good night, everybody. <laughs> So that is our show. Thanks for letting us fill a little of your weekend. We hope you enjoyed watching The Haunted Filler as much as we enjoyed making The Haunted Filler. We love making the show for and about you each and every week. And don't forget, you can follow us on social, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We've got great posts like the one you're looking at right now, and that's where we get all our great stories. Keep those story ideas coming. You know, hey, why don't you send us some pictures of you in your Halloween costume, and maybe we'll put them on our website. I'm Hubie Halloween, and until next week, we'll see you on the interwebs.